Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new build video with me Sherman and as I told you guys yesterday I was going to be releasing two builds a day for this whole entire week all the way through Saturday and this is the second build for the uh, Wednesday release of the Nightblade tanks so I release um, am releasing also at the same time as this one the Sh Shadow Guard this is the Necro Blade tank the Necro Blade tank is an off tank build in Trials and in dungeons, it is a main tank. The build itself works really, really well. I've tested it. I've played it. In fact, I've been, I've, I've, I've been playing it in the background for a long time. Actually, since uh, Ice Staff was introduced as a tanking weapon, I've actually been playing it in the background, testing it on PTS, and keep upgrading it and it, it, changing its, its configuration to give it more and more greater effect. Now, before I couldn't get it to the resources or to the resistance levels that I wanted, now I can, and it works amazing. So let's get right into it. So this is it. This is a Magicka Nightblade High Elf tank. And it, yes, as you guys can see, it is literally a Magicka High Elf tank. And it works amazing for both dungeons and at in-game. Now, it is not a, a, a main tank. It is an off tank. And because it's an off tank, it doesn't, doesn't utilize a sword and board. In fact, it utilizes only ice staff. And I'll get to explaining how when we get to the skills. But we'll go over all this stuff here in a second. As you can see, we have a full, uh, 30k Magicka with a 29k health. Now, you can change this based on the food types you're using. Right now, I'm using tri stat food. And with tri stat food, I get 30k Magicka, 29k health. If I switch to, say, dual stat food, which is going to be a lot better, I'm going to get 30k um, Magicka with a 30k health, which is really good for this build, and a 12k ma uh, stamina. You lose some stamina here, but that's okay. Don't stress it. In fact, it works out for the better benefit when running this way. As you can see, we have 1,294 magic recovery. That is essential to this build to work really well. We have a low stamina recovery and a low magic recovery, but don't worry, we are a magic build. We need to focus on this. Our spell damage is kind of low, but our spell crit is amazing for this. The other thing I, I guess I, I need to warn you guys about is this is a light armor tank. I'm not using any heavy armor whatsoever. So, moving on, as you can see with spell resistance, we have 26k spell resistance with a 25k physical resistance. That's really good with this kind of build. Now, we are running a ice staff, so we are using the ice staff passives that give you the block cost reduction and the um, blo blocking you know, damage thing for the ice side. And we're also using the taunt from the ice staff. So, moving down the line here, we have the Lady Mundestone. The reason we're using the Lady Mundestone is to increase our spell and physical resistance. Stop doing that game. Sorry, guys. Um, but to give us that increased spell and physical resistance. The next thing we have is Minor Vitality, because we are running Swallow Soul on one bar. So, that's where we're getting that from. We have Major Prophecy, because we do run Inner Light on both bars. Stop doing that game. Um... And next up, the food you use is up to you. Now, if you want to use the, the Witch Mother's Brew, you can. You're just going to lose a little bit more health and a little bit more Magicka, but you're going to get a lot better recovery. So you can use tri -stat, or dual stat food like the Witch Mother's Brew. But I, I would suggest sticking to the dual stat food. It's a lot better off. When it comes to potions, you can use tri stat or you can use power pots, depending on your situation. So the build itself is designed with the idea of tanking in small group content and tanking in in-game content. And mainly off tanking in in-game. So let's go ahead and take a look at the skills, or the gear, sorry, gear. So looking at the gear, you're looking at it and going, wow, that's not really cool. You know, I don't see anything good about it. Well, here's the thing. Our first uh, five piece that we're running is Fortified Brass. This is where we're getting all those extra resistances for the build to work really good. As you can see, it's called the Necroblade Tank uh, because that's who created the armor was this character. 
and it is a five piece light one medium one heavy so the way I set this up you can do it any way you want as long as the helm the chest and the legs one of those pieces is a medium piece and a heavy piece you can build it any way you want the uh, appearance I'm using is the worm colt so just so you know so we are running a five piece fortified brass the fortified brass is for the all around maximum resistance pool this helps us a lot when it comes to tanking and light armor gives us a really good resistances now I will admit this Nightblade is not the best option for this kind of a setup the warden works better but we're not playing a warden we're playing a Nightblade so the other thing that works really good for this build is being a vampire but if you're gonna be a vampire make him a dark elf you won't have as good as magic a pool but you will have close to that so but yeah vampire awesome with this setup so moving on we are running a one piece Lord Warden for the extra resistances because we want to get our resistances as high as possible because night blades in light armor have no way of boosting their resistances for long periods of time because of the shadow word thing in the uh, class you don't get a lot of high resistances so you want as high resistances as you can get without losing the benefits of sturdy now I am running four pieces of sturdy and I'm gonna show you guys that real quick now I am running also another five piece set and that five piece set is you guessed it withered hand and this is actually wor the the worm cult design already so the the nice thing about withered hand is it gives you max it gives you magic recovery it gives you max magic it gives you max health but the five piece bonus is really cool when an enemy within 20 8 meters of you dies heal for so much health and gain magicka so this is really good for in dungeon play with resource management this is really good in trial play for resource management when you're fighting trash so you can almost go full force DPS and waste a bunch of magicka and while you're killing things you're gonna start getting magicka back really fast so it's really really good for that all right moving on to the jewelry we are running withered hand jewelry and on the jewelry we are running two spell damage with one magic recovery this is how we get our magic recovery higher the fact that we're wearing light armor we get the one piece recovery from the uh, worm call or the withered hand and we're getting one from this as well so we get that extra 200 and something recovery and it allows us for that greater um, resource management so moving on to the bar down here we are running two withered hand st eye staffs I know you're probably wondering what the hell uh, but we are running two withered hand eye staffs one with hardening and one with crusher now the nice thing about having crusher here is if you are just doing damage in a dungeon and you're just wanting to clear trash this is great you can just drop your crusher or drop your wall of ice and your ice is gonna keep crusher applied continuously and you can just DPS right through them with this build so it's it's a it's a really impressive build I know it doesn't seem that much to you guys it's, it probably seems convoluted to a lot of the meta but this isn't a meta tank this is an off tank used to get people to end game that's it they can play it in dungeons as a main tank or they can play it in trials as an off tank that's what it's designed for it is not designed to be competitive it is not designed to be an in-game uber tank you can make some adjustments to it to make it more effective towards being a main tank if you want by adjusting everything to sturdy but I like the setup it has we are running three infused four sturdy pieces and because we're running a staff we also get extra uh, benefits and we'll get to those in a second so let's go ahead and take a look at the skills now and we're gonna start with uh, passives and stuff always make sure again class passives learn them all just learn them all it's gonna give you the greatest benefit for all of the skills you use next up is your weapon passives on the on the eye staff you want to learn them all and here's why try staff uh, try focus fully charged heavy attacks from the frost staff taunt the enemy for 15 seconds and grant you all right and grant a damage shield that absorbs 2960 damage this is really important 
While the Frost Staff is equipped, blocking costs Magicka instead of Stamina. That's why you need this on this build. You also need it because of Elemental, uh, elemental Force increases your chance to apply burning to cast and shield when you apply shield on an enemy you apply minor maim and it lasts for four seconds so this is really important to have when you lower you set your ice wall down to have that effect because you get a chance of applying shield to them which applies minor maim you can also immobilize them because of it so next up is ancient knowledge and this is also important Reduces Frost Staff reduces the cost of blocking by 36% and increases the amount of damage blocked by 20%. You guys remember when I talked about that with the with the, the other tanks, you want that good damage mitigation. This gives you really good resource management on that damage mitigation and gives you better damage mitigation than what you had before. But the build works a little different than that other tank I showed you. So moving on down the line here, we're going to look at the armor passes. You want to fill out all of your light armor passes because it doesn't work if you don't. And you want to make sure you take Dampen Magic. This surrounds yourself in a net of magic negation, gaining a damage shield that absorbs damage. This is all damage types. And that's 13,110 damage for six seconds. Now, each light piece of armor increases the amount of damage absorbed by 6%. That's why it's at 13,000. That's why you want Dampen Magic. Now, the passives you're going to get is Recovery. As you can see, 20% Recovery on the Light Armor. So that's why we want that Light Armor setup for this tank, is the higher Magic Recovery. And I'll explain why here in a second. So Evocation is another one. Reduces the cost of your Magic Abilities by 10%. This saves you a ton of resources. Next up is Spell Warding. This increases your spell resistance by 363 for each piece of light armor equipped. This is why our resistances on our spell side is higher than our physical resistance. is because we get so much more from our, our light armor passives. Next up we have Prodigy. When, you, when five or more pieces of light armor are equipped, it increases your spell critical rating by 2,191. This is good and beneficial to you. And I'll explain why here in a second. Concentration. When five or more pieces of ar light armor are equipped, you get 4,884 spell penetration. So no matter what, five or more, you're going to always get that. Almost 5K spell penetration. Now, a lot of people are going to ask, well, how are you going to get Major Breach and Major Fracture? And I'll get to that in a second. So moving on down the line, Dex of medium armor, fill out all, well, you just need these three. I accidentally filled this one in. Uh, but you mainly need it for athletics, wind walker, and dexterity. That's it. Heavy armor, you need the top three. And you really need these top three to for this build to work really good. This is going to give you extra physical and spell resistance. This is going to give you some health recovery, but it's also going to give you some return of magic and stamina. When you take damage, it's not a whole lot, but it still works. And then this one is going to increase your max health by 2%. Being a high elf, you don't get a lot of health. So that 2% is really going to help, especially when added to the Undaunted passive. We'll get to that in a second. World skills, same as always, guys. Soul summons and soul lock. You want to unlock those. They're very beneficial to your character, especially um, when in dungeons or trials and you need soul stones. This can fill soul stones. This can make you not use a soul stone every hour if you need to revive. So, Fighter's Guild, you want to make sure you get Intimidating Presence and always get Banished to Wicked. Sorry. Um, so, you want this Banished to Wicked to generate 9 Ultimate whenever you kill an Undead, Danger, or Werewolf. This helps you with Ultimate Generation. It's really important for this build, too. So, moving on to the Mages Guild, you want Persuasive Will and you want Magic Controller. Only those two, because you are running Inner Light on your bar, which increases your Max to Magicka. By 5%, this gives you an extra 2%, which makes it 7% increased Max Magicka. For a Nightblade, that's super important. All right, moving on. Nothing from Thieves' Guild. Undaunted, you want Inner Rage, and you want the two Undaunted passives. You want Undaunted Command and Undaunted Metal. As you can see, this gives me 6% increase in Max Health, Stamina, and Magicka. With that 2% from Heavy Armor, that's an 8% increase. 
That's very good for my character to have that extra health pool. Now, like I said, this is an off tank, not a main tank. So, the Undaunted Command just gives you resources back when you synergize with something. That's where Inner Beast is going to come into play. It's a synergy. But you're not going to be using this all the time. You're only going to be using this in Trials. And we'll get to that in a second. So moving on down the line, Assault, you just need Warhorn. And on the Support Bar, you can unlock Purge and Barrier if you want to. And you can utilize them. It's just up to you on how you choose to use them. Because with either one of those equipped, you get Magic Recovery. And like I said, being a Dark Elf in this and getting a Vampire, you'll get 10% more Magic Recovery. Really good Magic Recovery. And that's what this build really needs is more Magic Recovery. So... Sometimes you might want to put Purge on the bar or Reviving Barrier just to give you the greater benefits. On to the race, you want to make sure you unlock all your racial passes, especially being a High Elf, because you want that Max Magicka, you want that Max, uh, sorry, you want that Magic Recovery, you want that Max Magicka, and you want that Flame, Frost, and Shock damage, especially that Frost damage, the 4%. It adds up on this build really well. Next up, when it comes to crafting skills, you want to make sure you get Medicinal Use and Provisionings, Gourmand and Connoisseur. These are really essential at end game because you want your food to last as long as possible. So try to make sure you get those, those three passes from the crafting. So now we're going to go over the bars. <clears throat> we're going to start with the first bar. And now a lot of people have asked me, how are you going to get Major Breach and Major Fracture? Well, we're going to use Reaper's Mark. And the reason we're going to use Reaper's Mark is because it exposes an enemy, uh, enemy's weakness and inflicts them with Major Breach and Major Fracture for 20 seconds, which is 5 seconds more than Sword and Board's Taunt. So I can apply this and kind of forget about it for 20 seconds before I need to reapply it. Now the nice thing about this is when an enemy dies, you heal for 67% of your max health and gain Major Berserk, increasing the damage done by 25% for 5 seconds. So if I apply this to an enemy and I kill them, I get 25% more, or I get that Major Berserk. Now, the thing that sucks about playing this build is you can only have this on one enemy at a time. Where Sword and Board's time, I can put it, apply Major Breach and Major Fracture to more than one. That's why this works better as an off tank and not a main tank. Alright, moving on. The next ability we have, and this is a swap out ability, is Crushing Shock. Now, Crushing Shock forces the L, uh, focus all the elements and energies with your staff, blasting them with both Flame, Frost, and Shock damage. Now, because you are a, a high elf, you get 4% more increased damage to that Frost side, and enemies you hit with this while casting are interrupted, set off balance, and stunned for 3 seconds. So this is another way to keep up um, uptime of off balance in dungeons. Now in a trial, I would not run for Crushing Shock. I would actually go down here to the guild and grab the Undaunted Inner Rage. Now I have a taunt. And it's a synergy taunt. And in a, dun in a trial, synergies are super important. So this is going to give me another way to have a synergy applied to the enemy. It also does a decent amount of magic damage, and when the synergy is activated, it also does magic damage over time. So it taunts the enemy. So a ranged ally targeted the taunted enemy has a 38% chance to activate radiate synergy, dealing X amount of magic damage to them for 2 seconds, and then an additional 7,872 damage to them and other nearby enemies. So it's like an explosive ability. It's really good. It does a decent amount of damage, and it's just nice to have. So next up we have Dampened Magic. Remember what I was talking about? It? This is your damage shield. This is essential. You have to have this, or you're going to lose survivability. Now remember, when you use a heavy attack from a Frost Staff, you also get a damage shield. And I want to show you guys that damage shield real quick so you guys get a greater understanding of why this is important. So Trifocus gives you a damage shield. And as you can see, the damage shield granted absorbs 2,960 damage. That's almost 3k. When you apply the hardening enchant from the main bar, that is another 5k. Together, it is 8k damage shield. When you apply it with this 13k damage shield, you have over a 20k damage shield on your character 
which mitigates a ton of damage. 20k damage to be exact. That's a lot of damage that you can absorb. This is how you can get away with using other abilities. The next ability on our bar is one that we have to have. And we have to have one of these siphoning abilities to get Magicka Flood. This build plays off of Magicka. This is really important. This is where Sap Essence comes into play. Not only does Sap Essence increase our weapon and spell damage, it also does magic damage and heals us for 1,422 plus 20% more for each enemy hit. So this is a great heal for support and a great damage ability. If an enemy is hit, you gain Major Brutality, Major Sorcery, increasing weapon and spell damage by 20% for 20 seconds. So if I go down here, and I just want to show you this, to this guy, and I hit him with my Taunt, let's say, I hit him with Reaper's Mark, and then I hit him with Sap Essence, my spell damage goes to 2,000. That means all of my abilities that do damage, like my Taunt, goes up in damage. My this sap essence goes up in damage so when i cast it again it's going to do more damage see when i cast my taunt it's going to do more damage but when i have reaper's mark on and i do it now look at my taunt look at my thing it's more damage overall it's consistency now you guys are going to see my resource pools are really low so if i heavy attack with my eye staff watch what happens I'm getting 3k almost resources back from heavy attacks. And that's because of the way I made the build. It relies on heavy attacks. It really does. And in a trial situation, especially when it comes to like say Hellroth Citadel and you get to the Axis fight, this won't tank the Axis. This will tank the main boss while the other tank goes and tanks the Axis. So that's why he said this is an off tank and not a main tank. Is you have to change up your strategy in certain encounters to make this fit in there. So going back into the skills here, next ability we have on the bar is Inner Light. This increases our Max Magicka and increases our Spell Critical. That's how we get to that higher Spell Crit, which also increases our damage capabilities, which is really important. Because as an off tank, you want to focus on one thing or the other, either greater damage or greater support. Greater damage for this build. Next up, we have Veil of Blades. This is a really, really good ability for this character. With the 32k Magicka, you have a 2,805 damage that this does every second, while reducing the movement speed of the enemies within the circle by 70%, and also granting you and your allies major protection. Now, for 17 seconds, it's doing 2,805 damage per tick. It also does that 30% major protection for you and your group standing in the circle. So this is how you're gonna be using a lot of damage mitigation in a trial, or in a dungeon, not in a trial, but in a dungeon, for your group. In a trial, you're gonna be using Warhorn. So allies in this area can activate a hidden refresh synergy, granting them invisibility, increasing their movement speed, and healing them for X amount of health over four seconds. So for four seconds, you will disappear Go in, get greater movement speed and heal really fast. So it's a good synergy to use too in dungeons. Moving on to the back bar. Now on the back bar you have Wall of Elements or Black Blockade of Frost, which is the, a morph to it. And if you look at this, it says slam your staff down to create an ice barrier in front of you, dealing X amount of frost damage um, to enemies in the target area every one second and reducing their movement speed by 60%. Chilled enemies become frozen and are immobilized for four seconds. This is where I was talking about when you put this down You put the crusher on them now watch what happens because I'm using an infused staff when crusher wears off it reapplies Now I can also do this and get the same effect Or should be getting the same effect there we go crusher and then I can use this and get extra damage sorry So not only do I just did I just apply that crusher enchant and keep it applied effectively but I can also do this and then refreshing path and I get a heal and I can heavy attack and keep my damage shields active. So moving on, we are running refreshing path for the heal over time and the damage it does. It does a nice amount of damage and a nice heal for you and any allies standing in it. 
Now, while the path is on for up to two seconds after leaving it, you and your allies are healed for 1,042 every second and you gain major expedition. So it increases your movement speed. So this is how you're gonna get around in, in content. Now, when you have to hit an enemy up far away, like let's say I'm, I'm, I'm tanking this guy, but I need that guy. I can heavy attack like this and get his attention instead of going, oh, switch bars and taunt. I have two taunts. So I have my heavy attack taunt, which keeps my damage shield up and that, and then watch what happens when I do this. That's a 24k damage shield, guys. With the heavy attack. So that's a really powerful damage shield for this character. And it works out really well in the long run. So moving on through the bar here. <clears throat> onto the back bar, I mean. We got Swallow Soul. Now this is a nice heal for you. And you don't have to use it. You can actually use siphoning strikes and the magic of siphoning attacks to get magicka back if you want. Um, you can use this instead of Swallow Soul. I would suggest using this in a trial and use this in a dungeon because this is going to grant you minor uh, vitality, increasing the healing you receive, but it's also going to give you that um, extra damage dealing and healing you know, kind of thing that you do for yourself. It, it's just to keep you better maintained so next up we run mirage now we run mirage for the physical and spell resistance boost and the dodge chance so that's why we're using it um so when you cast mirage you can see our resistances are 28k with 26k physical so that's really good but if we also use refreshing path you can see we go to 33 31 but that only lasts so long a few seconds and then it goes away so you need to keep that consistency of constantly trying to keep this up and Mirage up while tanking off this bar. So you can tank, do some heavy attacks. You want to keep Mirage up. You want to use Sap Essence. Your Taunt. And, and heavy attacks. And the reason you want to keep heavy attacks up is keep your resource management good. So that's the main purpose of, of this build is to have heavy attacks for that resource management. Now, I know a lot of people will look at this build and say, well, that's not really going to work in the end game. But you have to understand, in end game, it's a lot different than in a dungeon. In a dungeon space, it's only four people. In the end game, it's 12. That's why this build can work as an off tank. <clears throat> Next up is Inner Light. This increases, of course, max magic and spell crit. And then on... Sorry. On to the last one, of course, Aggressive Warhorn. And Aggressive Warhorn is really good for you because when you activate it, you go up to 33k health and 34k Magicka. This gives you greater management of your character. 33k health is really good, especially for an off tank in, in game. So it's a good way to keep that consistency, again, of your resources. So just saying. Now we're going to go take a look at champion points. And of course, again, guys, champion points are set up very similar to the other one. Just it's Magicka. So looking at this, we have 37 in Ironclad. This reduces damage taken against damage um, direct damage attacks and is really, really good for just extra mitigation. Next up, we have 37 in the Sick Thick Skin. Again, reducing the damage taken from damage over time by 15%. We have 43 in the Hardy, 43 in the Elements of Defender. These both reduce the greatest amount of damage of anything. So these are the ones you want to start with first. The next one you want to focus on is Bastion. And that is going to be for 56 points to get 20% more effect from your damage shields. Boosting those damage shields gives you greater control and survivability, especially in the end game. Moving on to Expert Defender. This one reduces the damage you take from light and heavy attacks by 13 or by 10%. Also beneficial. Now, remember how I told you guys the heavy armor thing, like you want the greater heals? Well, this one, you're going to have just 2%. Plus the 5, 8% from Swallowed Soul in a dungeon. Otherwise, you just get 2% extra healing done or received. But you're not a main tank, so you don't have to really worry about that too much. And, Yeah. So you're, you just need heals to affect you. 
Moving on, we have 23 in the Warlord. This reduces our stamina cost of Break Free. Remember, we don't have a huge stamina pool, but we want that greater Break cost, uh, break Free. I know I didn't cover this, but I just want to point this out. Three Tri-Stat Glyphs, the rest are health. Just so you guys know. And two, four Sturdy, three uh, Infused. Again, I took the idea from classic tank builds and just kind of took the idea of it and put it in here. And that's why we have the high Magicka pool with the high things like that is so that that way if we do need to use blocking we have the resources to block with and we can still ma uh, manage our our resources for things like our damage shield and applying the taunt so That's uh, why we want the break free reduced cost. We want that lower stamina cost. Just like with bashing, we want that lower stamina cost. All right, moving on to the middle trade. This is where I, I won't say that you need to start here, but it is a good place to start. We have 75 in Arcanus. This gives us 14% more magic recovery onto the 10% we get for um, light armor. That's 14, that's 24%. And then for being a Nightblade, we get 15%. So we get a lot of magic recovery, really good magic recovery from playing a High Elf, all this kind of stuff. And it works really good with this build. So the next one is Tenactacy. We only have 10% in here. And that's because our baseline recovery from heavy attacks is 30%. Getting an extra 10% takes it to 40%, which is better. Because when we heavy attack with this build, we not only get the, the resource back from the heavy attack, but we also get this 1,294 back. So it allows us to get more resources back from our heavy attacks. And that's how we can maintain our resources. Oh, going on in here. So 40, 75 here, 43 here, or you can go 43 and 75. It's up to you. Moving on to the next one, we have 56 in the Shadow Ward. This reduces our cost of blocking by 20%. Now remember, you get 36% um, from using a staff. You get 16% from the Sturdy, and that gives you a lot of block cost reduction. Not a, not a super whole lot, but enough to compensate for the pool and everything else. All right, moving on to the next thing is Tumbling. We have 10%. Now remember, I mentioned this with the last build. You get 4% extra from wearing one piece of medium armor. I get a 14% reduced cost in dodge roll. So it saves me resources and stamina to have that. I don't want to use dodge roll all the time, but if I need to dodge roll out of something or I need to break free out of something, I have the resources to do it. All right, so that's why we have that there. And we have four in the foul, even though we're not using anything that applies major um, defile you can still have this or you can put these four points anywhere you want all right moving on over here we have 43 in the blessed we do use refreshing path and we do use that that heal this helps with those healing abilities to increase them so that's why we have this next up we have 23 in the elf born this increases our critical damage done by 10 percent now because we have such a high critical rate of 43 we're going to crit more often and that means that greater damage is going to be more potential for our, our, not only us, but for our group. Next up, we have 43 into Spell Erosion. This increases our, our Elemental Expert. This increases our f f Flame, Frost, and Shock and Magic damage by 10%. So not only is our, our Frost damage increased by 4% for being a High Elf, it's increased by another 10% because of this. So we get 14% more damage from Shock. We have 13 points in the spell erosion, increasing our spell penetration by 1,283. This helps in group play. All right, moving on. Next, we have 35 in the Staff Expert. Just like with the last build, uh, the, the other Nightblade, I did the same thing. But this one is a little different. This has 20% here and 15% here. Because we crit more often, we don't really need as much from here even though it would boost our damage potential. But we're going to be also doing a lot more damage over time. So that's where Shattering Blows comes into play, increases the damage done to enemies with damage shields, and Thaumaturge of 10%.
See, we took 5% from here, but we also increased our damage over time by another 10%. So any damage over time we do, we do gets 20 something percent increase. So it's, it's kind of nice. And then on top of that, we have 15 from here. Um, these benefits here also give us Reposit. And as you can see, Reposit doesn't give us a lot of physical damage back, but it does give us a nice chunk if we do block an attack and redirect damage back to the enemy. We also get Butcher, which increases our light and heavy attacks, of course. We also get Opportunist. Now, we don't get Exploiter, and that's fine, but we do get Opportunist. So if we interrupt an enemy with a block or a bash, we can al also get extra 15 extra uh, percent damage when we light attack them along with the 30% we get for blocking that light attack, or that heavy attack. So we get a lot of damage still. And that is pretty much it for the Necroblade. Now I just showed you guys the build itself, and honestly it's just like any other tank. You taunt, you keep your damage shield applied, you keep your, you know, mark target, and you don't have to worry because, see, your taunt is attached to your staff, so all you need is Reaper's mark. And you can get a lot of tanking capabilities out of the building. You can also do your regular time, which is going to cost you some magicka. But as long as you keep your heavy attacks going, you can ta tank pretty good. If you're not heavy attacking, you can just tank like this, like taunt like that, and keep block up. And just keep the damage shield. Because they have to go through the damage shield to, make, to activate your block. So you can still hold block and let them hit you. It'll take the shield off when it wears it out, and you'll still get the mitigation from the block. So it's a really important thing to have those damage shields on your character. And that is the Necroblade. So I know the Necroblade doesn't ma uh, match up to a lot of other builds I've done, but I just wanted to show people that you can make tanks and light armor and how effective they can be. And that's why I made the Necro build the way I did. Now, you can do this in heavy armor and be just as effective. It's up to you to decide how you want to do it. But, unfortunately, guys, that is the end of this video. I do want to thank um, all the people who have been subscribed to me. And I also want to give a shout-out to ESO Daily um, for, you know, accepting that I don't follow. You know, I, I might not do what he does. And we have to respect each other's, you know, ideas because... We are different people. We do have different play styles. We have, do, do have different uh, things. So just a shout out to him for, you know, showing me the good respect he has been showing me and to show his, my respect in return. So thank you, ESO Daily. And to all of ESO Daily's fans um, for, for, you know, letting me sit and chat with you guys this morning and talk to you. That was really awesome. It was a lot of fun. So thank you guys. So, uh, yeah, but that's pretty much it. So if you guys like this build video, Hit that like button if you guys want to see more builds by me or other videos by me. You can hit that subscribe button. Other than that, I do want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day. And this guy might see you in game. Bye.